and welcome to take five of Nettie Reads Too Much July wrap up. I'm Lynette, I'm Nettie Reads Too Much and um, I'm going to tell you about the books that I managed to get through in July. I managed a total of seven books this month. Um, two and a half of those were for Booktubeathon so I'm going to tell you about my Booktubeathon books during this wrap up as well. Um, I finished um, a third book um, the day after Booktubeathon finished, so which is why I only read two and a half books. Um, so first off this month, uh, the first book that I read was Safe Haven by Nicholas Sparks. This is the second book I've had from Nicholas Sparks and I actually did enjoy this a lot more than the first. Um, this is the story of Katie, who uh, you find out quite early on in the book, is on the run from um, something in her past. Um, it, you do actually find out quite quickly that she's on the run from an abusive husband. Um, and the story of um, Alex, uh, who she meets in the small town where she moves to, he runs the local store and he's a widower and bringing up his two children on his own. Um, it's a story of how they meet and um, and obviously they fall in love and the events that um, that lead from uh, what Katie's running from and um, there's some other things from Alex's past which I'm not going to go into but they do involve a lady called Jo and there is a bit of a twist right at the very end which I did appreciate and is the reason why I actually gave this book four stars this month. Um, I The reason I didn't give it five stars, even though I really enjoyed it and it had me gripped from start to finish, is because I also read earlier on this year um, Rose Madder by Stephen King. I love Rose Madder, and unfortunately for me, um, Safe Haven was far too similar in the way the story played out and things that happened um they they were it was just too similar for me um and i kept finding that i was comparing it uh, which is why i knocked off a star in the end because there were times i could not differentiate between the two stories um <clears throat> after that i moved on to fury of surrender by corinne callahan sorry please excuse me um, this is a long-awaited sequel. Um, it's taken two years for Corrine to bring out Fury of Surrender. It is um, book six in her Dragon Fury series, uh, which centres around a group of dragon shift men um, who are in a pack called the Night Furies. Uh, these Night Furies the story surrenders around centers around a, a new night fury male every book and how he finds his happy ever after with his own personal high energy female um, by high energy female um, in, in this story there are rings that circle our planet and human females can tap into those rings and draw energy from them which they can then use to feed dragon kind men um, there are no dragon kind females. Um, this is explained in a previous book, um, I think in the very first book in the series, that uh, the goddess cursed dragon kind uh, with no females to be born um, because of some thing that had happened in their past. Um, and this is all going to play out apparently according to, to Corrine in a recent video that she did on Facebook. Um, this will all play out in future books um, and the Night Furies have a big part in putting this right. Um, this story uh, centres around Forge and Hope. Uh, Forge is a Scottish dragon who is now living in Seattle with the Night Furies and he's trying to access a repressed memory. Hope is a hypnotherapist that uh, the Night Furies bring in to help Forge and uh, the two fall in love and forge a connection. I don't mean a pun there. Um, and uh, it's their story. These stories 
there's um, there is a fair bit of backstory um, going on. So there's a lot of players involved. There's a lot of other plot involved. Um, so you don't get a lot of time with the main couple and it does play out quite quickly for them. Um, it is uh, very much an insta love story, but I it, it's normally they're normally executed quite well um, with with Corrine's books. Um, I do enjoy reading them. They keep me gripped from start to finish and I always end with a smile on my face. Um, and this book I gave four stars. I do recommend though because there is a lot of subplot going on uh, regarding wars with other um, dragon kind packs that you start at the beginning uh, which is Fury of Fire and work your way through because the, the, the subplots actually work their way through each book. Um, I then moved on to a book called Love's Revenge uh, by Monica Burns. Uh, this is an historical romance fiction novel um, and it's based around Quentin Blackwell, the Earl of Devlin, um, and, uh, oh, I can't remember his, and Sophie Hamilton, uh, who he meets and falls in love with. Um, again, it's a bit of an insta-love story. It was a quick read designed to just keep me going. I was in the mood for historical fiction. I don't read them very often, uh, historical romance. Um, but every time I've read them, I have really enjoyed them. Um, I gave uh, this book um, oh I've lost the ratings ah there we go I gave this book three stars um, like I say it, it wasn't the, the best book in the world it was a little bit wishy-washy sometimes in story um, it wasn't brilliantly executed um, but it was enough to, to while away a couple of hours. Um, so if you if you like them easy to read, um, then that's the one to get going. Um, I then moved on to um, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I am doing a reread of all the Harry Potter books this year. Uh, so this was the next in line for me to read. Um, and again, it's... Um, it's another book that keeps me gripped from start to finish. I didn't want to put the book down when I had to. I had to force myself. Um, uh, though I, I'm sure there aren't many people watching this that haven't read Harry Potter. Um, so we all know what happens. If we haven't read the books, then we've probably seen the films. Um, it's Harry's fifth year and this year um, he's trying to convince everyone around him that he saw uh, uh, the return of Voldemort at the end of the previous school year and nobody believes him and it's um, it's where the um, the DA, the Dumbledore's army appear and it's just, it, it's it's such a good, good book. There's some funny moments, there's some sad moments and towards the end, um, those of you who have read it will know there is the one of the ultimate sad moments in Harry's um, teenage life that we read about. Um, for me, this is the book where it all starts to become real. I don't know whether that's linked to the fact that Voldemort is no longer a fictional character. He's he's now um, flesh and bone, so he is able to, to wreak havoc um, even more so. Um, he, he's, he's back. Um, but also with the events that happen at the end of the book, for Harry, it really, even though he'd lost his parents to Voldemort, I think this is the book that really, for Harry, starts to hit Voldemort, starts to hit him what Voldemort means for him and his future and where this is going. Um, so I do, I read these, I, these last three books, this book, book six and book seven, I do read with some trepidation because I know that there are some some quite upsetting things that happen and um, although I'm quite eager to start book six because I want to get to, I want to get to book seven and I want to get to Voldemort being defeated, um, 
I don't want to read it because I know what happens at the end of book six and then I know that there's some upsetting events at the start of book seven and I just wish I could skip those parts but you can't otherwise you wouldn't get the full effect of the story. This was a five star read. Um, Harry Potter always hits the spot um, and I, I just um, at the start of um, when I finished this book I was reading it over the weekend before book Tubathon started um, when my partner's mum was in hospital she had a hip replacement operation and we were up and down to the hospital that weekend and I was reading it in the car because the the hospital was an hour away from where we live um, so I, I got some good reading in um, and just while we were toing and froing. Um, from there um, I then moved into Booktubeathon um, I didn't start Booktubeathon on the Monday, I started Booktubeathon on Wednesday. I lost two days reading because, um, as I said, my partner's mum was in hospital and she didn't come home until the beginning of the week. So we were running around um, up and down to the hospital for her and then getting her settled in back at home again. So I didn't really have, even though I was on holiday, any reading time for Booktubeathon. Um, until Wednesday. I picked up uh, First Grave on the Right by Dorinda Jones. This was the um, book that fit the face um, or person on the cover challenge and I did manage to finish this book and it was five stars. It's the story of Charlie Davidson and I gave this book five stars because I was pleasantly surprised. I was not expecting to enjoy this book as much as I was. I wasn't expecting um, the story to play out quite like it did. Um, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I've always been led to believe that it's paranormal romance. And I don't think it is so much, or it didn't come across that way to me. I found it to be paranormal mystery with a bit of romance thrown in. Um, it's Charlie Davidson's story. She is a Grim Reaper and she helps souls cross to the other side. Um, but what she does is that um, she runs a private detective agency. She does work for humans as well um, as part of that private detective agency. But she also um, helps souls and the police solve mysteries of how people have died and why. Um, so in this case, she is investigating the deaths of three solicitors who all died on the same night. Um, and um, the, the, the mystery takes you through. I won't say any more about that because I'm very good at giving away spoilers. But it, it, the mystery really intrigued me. Um, you do find out um, through the flow of the story who did it. It's not, it's not a who done it so much um, because you do find out. Um, but then once you find out, it's how they then go about bringing that person to justice um, and how they use Charlie, how the police use Charlie's gift as a Green Reaper to, to get to that ending. Um, alongside that, there is a bit of romance. Um, you start out um, quite hot and heavy um, with this. Um, Charlie's had a dream about um, a man. Um, and this man has been becoming clearer in her dreams over a period of time and he appears throughout um, the book and he um, has a part to play in things that happen to Charlie and um, but it, it's not it doesn't overtake the story um, the the romance really does uh, have a more of a back burner feel and um, it left you wanting more um, you find out, Ray, there's a bit of mystery around Ray's, who is the mystery man, um, and how he find, and how she finds out who he is. Um, and that does play through the rest of the book. And it does, you do find out who he actually is at the end of the book. And it left me wanting more. So much so that I've gone straight onto my local library's website and have requested a copy uh, when one's available of the second book in the series which I believe is called Second Grave on the left. Um, so I shall be looking forward to getting my hands on that and reading that as soon as possible. Um, the Oh and I gave that book five stars. 
The second book that I managed to finish for Booktubeathon is When I Was Yours by Samantha Towell. I gave this book four stars. Um, I was a little disappointed with this book. Um, I love Samantha Towell, I love her writing, and I, um, I do, oh I don't know if you can hear that in the background, my cat's trying to get in the living room, um, but I've shut them out because they keep knocking the camera over. This is take five. Um, and I've had to shut them out. Um, yes, um, this is the story of Adam and Evie, and it's a second chance romance story. Um, they met when they were in their teens, uh, when they were 18 and 19, and a week after they were married, Evie left um, with no trace, and Adam couldn't find her or her family, uh, despite all the um, he's, he's a rich kid so he had a lot of resources at his disposal. Um, he, this, the story um, is told in two different timelines. You have the story from when they were teenagers, of how they met and got married and leading up to Evie leaving. And the second storyline um, is was in present day or when, when uh, 11 years later um, when Adam walks into a coffee shop and sees Evie behind the counter for the first time. And it's the story of how they come back together. There is a happy ever after. However, I felt disappointed in the way the story was told. For me, the story could have done, um, it skipped, the chapters skipped between timelines um, and the chapter headings told you which timeline you were in. Um, However, for me, I think I could have done with reading it. So I could see what the author was trying to do. Um, she was trying to lead a, a li little bit of um, mystery to why Evie left. To be honest, I figured it out early on in the book. Uh, it's not difficult. Um, I gave it four stars because I do enjoy her stories and I could see what um, Samantha Tower was trying to do. And I do recommend her books, um, and she is an auto buy author for me. Um, but uh, this story alternating between the timelines, it just didn't work for me. I think I would have preferred to have the, 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 the older timeline told and then come back to the later timeline um, afterward. Um, also, Adam, because he's a bit of an arrogant it for want of a better word in in the later timeline I couldn't reconcile that with the sweet 19 year old that he was um, falling in love experiencing love for the first time I just couldn't reconcile the two and I think I, I would have been able to better believe the younger version of Adam had I just read the younger version of Adam and not the the arrogant hurt man that he bitter man that he became um so i think for me it could have done with playing out quite differently um in the in the writing um and then the last book i moved on to was my final book i moved on to carter reed this by tm this was um a three star book for me although it teeters on the two to three star um i it's the story of Carter Reed and Emma. Um, Carter is affiliated to the mob. Emma, um, and I'm not giving anything away here because it's in the synopsis, Emma walks into her flat and finds her roommate being raped by his, her boyfriend. Um, so trigger warning, there is rape involved in this. Um, and she shoots the boyfriend dead. Um, and she goes to Carter who she's known since she was a small girl. He was uh, her brother's best friend until her brother was killed by um, another mob family um, when they were children, uh, when they were teenagers. Um, so she goes to Carter for help and it's their, their love story. Um, except I, I didn't feel it. Um, it had... It's got great bones of a story. I just don't think it was as executed as well as it could have been. I've only read a couple of mob-based 
books um, and neither of them have actually been um, romance novels that is um, I've read um, um, the Mario Puzo novels um, and really enjoyed those um, but these romance novels that I've read it just doesn't work um, not for me anyway I just don't feel this book had the execution it deserved um, so it, it's a two to three star for me I've given it three stars because it was the upper end of two it had the bare bones um, I just I didn't like the way the author kept repeating things um, she kept repeating events she kept repeating um, circumstances and it, I just felt it to be very unrealistic and I know we read romance not expecting it to be real life but you you need to feel a sense of realism to the story to make it believable um so that rounded off the month um it's hasn't made me slumpy because i made sure that i went on to pick up a book i've been eagerly looking forward to and um yesterday i actually started heartless by marissa meyer that was also one of my booktube um books but i thought i really want to read it and it's on my list of books to read this year so uh, i thought i might as well get on and, and get on with it um and so far i'm really enjoying it um i didn't want to put it down when i went to bed last night and i actually uh, read it for half an hour at lunchtime today and I could quite cheerfully have told my boss that I wasn't coming back to my job this afternoon because I just wanted to carry on reading. Um, but I will wrap that one up at the end of August. Um, I'm going to uh, take part in Tome Topple this month. Um, that runs from the 4th of August to the 17th. Um, I've got a couple of large novels um, waiting to be finished. I have Outlander, which I'm 48% of the way through and frankly I need an excuse to pick it up and finish it. I was enjoying it, I was just easily distracted by something else. So from um, from Sunday, um, nope, from, from Friday, um, I will be reading that one, hopefully finishing that one, and then I have a choice of books to get through. I'm toying um, with the idea of continuing with The Lord of the Rings, I'm only 11% of the way through it. I have read them before, so it's no biggie if I don't go on to it. I have others that I haven't read before um, that I want to get to that are in excess of 500 pages. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to see where I go from here. Um, so that's my um, chatty wrap up this month um, and a little bit of what I'm gonna read in August. Um, I will see you again next video. Goodbye.